Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jenna Lee. I am passionate about restoring home, family, and spirit through tried and true homemaking skills. Restoring some of those homemaking skills that maybe have been forgotten in our 100 year old little farmhouse. We are starting the day bright and early. I just wanted to walk you through our day of what we're eating. It just so happens to be a meatless day, a meatless Wednesday. <laughs> I wanted to show you all the things that we are eating and really cooking from scratch today. We are starting this morning off with some sourdough bread. We are all out of bread and I usually like to have four loaves of sourdough sandwich bread in the freezer during the week. So we're getting that started. Today we are going to be baking. We're going to be making some sourdough apple crepes this morning, something fresh from the garden for lunch and a potato and lentil mushroom stew for dinner with beef bone broth. And of course, sourdough bread. Now that we've started homeschool, by the way, this is our first year homeschooling, so I'm really trying to get a hang of the routine um, and what that looks like in our house. But yesterday I fed my sourdough starter and left that to ferment and mixed up the dough this morning for my sourdough sandwich bread that I make every week. But basically anything that I want to get done and get started has to happen in the morning before we get school started. Little Evie is already three months old. Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't believe it. And then I just proceed to do my fold and stretching as I am getting breakfast done and other things. I try to fold a few times, although honestly, I usually end up just folding and stretching probably three times. Now that our chickens are finally laying eggs, it's really nice to just go out and, and grab the eggs from the yard. Although this chicken door has been malfunctioning, and shutting and keeping the, the chickens from laying in the coop. So it really looks more of like an Easter egg hunt um, these days, trying to find where the chickens are laying their eggs. So I obviously need to get a new chicken door. And the broom is to hoard off the ornery rooster, who is getting a little cocky these days. And our kids have affectionately named Lord Voldemort. I also have been feeding the chickens these grubs from Grubterra and I'll put a link down below if you want to check them out as well. It's nice to have just a dehydrated source of protein um, on hand. So I really stopped tending the garden when I was about eight and a half months pregnant this summer. And Jared's been in and out here and there, but he's also started back to school. Um, so the weeds have taken over, but it's still producing quite a bit of tomatoes still. And so I wanted to get in here and see what I could find. Jared did actually plant some fall crop of greens. We've got some bok choy and kale and some other greens in here that need to be used. We got our seeds from Survival Garden Seeds this year, and I really enjoyed how they taught us how to harvest some of our own seeds from our plants. So we did let a lot of our plants go to seed this year with the intention of harvesting those seeds for next year. So Jared's been doing a little bit of that, and that's been really fun learning how to harvest your own seeds. We're always motivated by things that help us be more self-sufficient and also help um, save us a little bit of money. I am so grateful that we live in a gardening farming community. So I have these boxes of apples and pears sitting in my kitchen that need to be processed, which I'm planning on bottling. But this morning we're going to use some of them um, and make a topping to go in our crepes. So I'm just chopping up and cooking some apples and pears. I'm adding a little bit of butter, some sugar, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and a little bit of water and boiling that on the stove. I am making some sourdough crepes that I'm just eyeballing here. I did about a cup of sourdough starter. 
um, as many eggs really as we wanted. This is a really high protein rich breakfast. So I added about six or seven eggs, about a half a cup of cow's milk and blended that all up. And then I decided it was still pretty runny. So I added about a half a cup of flour or so. This is a great way to use up some sourdough discard. I have a lot of sourdough discard still sitting on the counter from making bread this morning. So I needed to use some of that up. And I love the idea of having these fermented grains for breakfast. I used to always follow recipe for grapes, but with this being my kids absolutely favorite breakfast, I just kind of throw it together. I know what kind of consistency I'm looking for. And Hey, if the first crepe doesn't turn out, I think it's actually very rare that the first crepe turns out perfectly. Um, but you can always add more milk or flour. I had made some homemade ricotta a couple days ago and I needed to use it. So this morning we are having ricotta and cooked apple and pear crepes. No, no she did this. So we usually have breakfast around 9.30 or 10. I know it seems kind of late, but we started out with breakfast and a little bit of scripture study and some prayer and then we hit it off with homeschool. Homeschool usually takes a few hours and I have to give my undivided attention to each three of these kiddos and more so for the younger kids. My oldest is a little bit more independent these days but I am taking a couple of breaks to tend to the sourdough. I decided to put together a couple quick artisan loaves of sourdough bread for our soup tonight. Our kids love the crusty sourdough artisan loaves that you can dip in your soup, but I needed it to be quick. So I added a package of yeast. And at first I, I felt like this was kind of cheating with sourdough, um, usually cause it's, it's not a yeasted bread. Um, but when I am in a hurry and I need it to um, go quickly, I add a little bit of yeast and I'm still going to ferment it for a few hours, but it will rise much quicker when it comes to baking. So I am just popping in the kitchen now and then to do a few stretch and folds on my sourdough loaves that I have going. And before lunch gets started, I just have to clean this kitchen because I can't start cooking in the kitchen with a bunch of dirty dishes. I know you're probably shocked to see that there is a dirty kitchen here on YouTube, but let's just be honest, guys. I am a mama, just like all the rest of you, and my kitchen gets dirty. And with preserving season in full swing, with homeschool going, who has had time to really deep clean this kitchen? not me. So hopefully when it's all said and done, I will be able to take a day to just really get in here and give it a deep clean. But for now, I feel like I'm just maintaining, just trying to keep afloat between meal times. For lunch, I usually try to do something really simple. We are usually eating leftovers or a version of fast food from scratch. So um, that often includes sandwiches or pasta. Today, we're gonna use up some of these cherry tomatoes from the garden um, by making a quick cherry tomato basil marinara over pasta. I picked up some butternut squash, pumpkin-shaped noodles from Trader Joe's. 
um, for the kids. They absolutely love pasta and I like to make them feel a little bit special by finding some um, good sourced pasta and fun shapes for them. For this sauce though, I'm just going to saute some onions and tomatoes and garlic. And at this moment, I'm actually getting started the beef stock for tonight's dinner by roughly chopping up a whole onion, a few stalks of celery. I'm just laying it on here. I pick up a bag of beef bones actually from the butcher and just keep that in the freezer. I pulled these out the night before and so they have been thawing in the fridge. I throw on some carrots, a sprig of rosemary. I drizzle some oil over the top and a little bit of salt. And I put that in the oven at 500 degrees to roast for about 30 minutes. And this just really helps to enhance and bring out the delicious flavors. It draws some of the fats out and just gets those bones ready for boiling. One of my goals for this year was to have an herb garden and um, being pregnant, it just did not happen. So I have a couple of herbs sitting here on the counter that I also picked up from Trader Joe's and I like to be able to just pull some fresh herbs from there. I'm going to throw in some rosemary and basil into this tomato sauce. and a little bit of sugar and some balsamic vinegar. And when it just simmers here, that balsamic vinegar and that sugar comes together and it just creates this beautiful glaze and, and balance of flavors. I feel really blessed that I'm able to spend more time with my kids this year and to feed them good foods, um, to be there during all the moments of their day, and especially to be able to sit down with them at each meal and just check in with each other, see how the day is going. Take a moment to just breathe. How come we don't have siestas in America? <laughs> Don't you think we ought to have a moment to just pause during the middle of the day, take a break from our work and just breathe a little bit, relax a little bit, enjoy the sun. Just take a moment for pure rest and enjoyment. I think it would do us all a lot of good. So now I'm going to finish off my bone broth here in the Instapot. Although you don't have to have an Instapot, you could definitely just put all of this into a pot of boiling water on the stove and let that simmer for a few hours. The Instapot merely speeds up the process. So um, it's only taking about 35 to 40 minutes here in the pressure cooker to come out with bone broth. With activities that we need to get to this evening, I'm really crunched for time. So I am hurrying and getting the sourdough shaped and ready to go. This is our artisan loaves and it's looking great. I'm gonna do another stretch and fold on this and this recipe is good for two loaves of bread. So I'm going to split that here now. I've been studying sourdough bread making from the Tartine Bread Book and I will put that down in the description box below if you are interested in checking it out. Whatever your hobby is, I think it's good to be constantly learning and educating yourself on that. And this I found to be a good source for learning about sourdough. It's from this book that I learned that there's something called a poolish, which is a mixture of flour and yeast and water. And that goes into your sourdough as well. And that's in some of the recipes. And that's what sparked the idea of putting a little bit of yeast in my dough today when I was in a hurry to get some bread on the table. 
It's not something that I typically do in my bread recipes, but it had a great turnout today. So I think it's something good to keep in your toolbox if you're in a hurry. I think sourdough is highly romanticized here online. We see lots of pictures of sourdough. For me, I like the self-sufficient side of sourdough and not needing to um, really rely on a store to have bread all the time. But the idea that it just keeps giving back. Like all really good things in life, sourdough takes time. It takes work, it takes effort and grit and really taking the time to study and learn. Like I said before, I think it's wise to study our hobbies, to educate ourselves on our hobbies. Um, there is so much out there that you can learn through books and blogs and reading, um, but I have to say that the most education you're gonna get is through your hands and putting your hand to the dough and figuring things out, so to speak. So um, go ahead and put your questions down in the comments down below what you would like to know more about, whether it's how to make a starter, how to start a starter, how to maintain one, um, just baking the bread um, itself. But let's talk some sourdough in the comments down below. So a lot of these potatoes are from our garden. I like using those little new potatoes in stews and soups. I think it's always fun when you find those little tiny baby potatoes in there. So I'm gonna be using those today. And we are going to be making a lentil potato and mushroom stew. I just didn't really have the right cuts of meat to make a beef stew, but I do love a good beef stew. And soon we are going to be harvesting some venison here on our own property in just the next month. And I'm excited to be loading the freezer with some deer meat soon um, and making some venison stew here soon. Don't mind the mess, the boxes of pears and apples and all the craziness, but this is where I like to hide some of my old crocs that I use to bake bread in. And so they have definitely seen better days. I've got a brand new one and a couple old ones, but this is what we're gonna be baking our sourdough bread in. And I'm just putting those in this really piping hot oven at 500 degrees, getting them ready to bake our sourdough loaves in. Since these potatoes are gonna take a little bit longer to cook, I'm throwing them in here. I'm browning the onions and the celery and letting that get all nice and crispy in some butter. Cooking with wine always makes for a really rich and delicious stew. Um, I am substituting with some apple cider today and just picking up all of the brown bits at the bottom. It's gonna be full of flavor, really delicious and no, the sugars of the apple cider don't seem to really affect the soup, and I think it still has that really rich and enhanced flavor. And I'm just also enjoying a little sip of this seasonal spiced apple cider. Then I'm going to be adding our beef bone broth to our really vegetarian stew here. Bone broth has so many wonderful vitamin rich qualities to it. And it also does add some protein to your meal. Now that these crocs are piping hot, they're ready to put the bread loaves in. So a couple tips for making sourdough bread is to use rice flour instead of flour in your bannetons, those little baskets. And that really helps 
keep that dough from sticking to the basket since it's such a moist, wet dough. So rice flour works from keeping that from sticking. And I don't have any more of those little razors. I need to order more of them for scoring. So I just sharpened up this knife and I'm doing a really simple, easy score here. Nice and deep so that it has plenty of space to rise. So I cook these loaves in the crocks with the lid on for about 25 minutes at 500 degrees. And then after about 25 minutes, I take the lids off and let it cook for another 20 minutes in the stove and get nice and golden and brown. For the stew, I'm adding a half a cup of brown lentils and a little bit more of the beef broth so that there's plenty of moisture for those lentils to cook. They're gonna take about 20 minutes and I'm really rushing to get dinner in on time before we have to go and praying over these lentils that they will cook quickly. And I'm adding these mushrooms as well. I really wanted there to be some really good big chunks of mushrooms so I cut them pretty large. I think the key to getting a really nice thick stew is to not add too much liquid in the beginning because you can always add more and it's hard to take that away. And then the second secret to a nice thick stew is making um, a little roux, so to speak, with some flour and broth. And I just grabbed some of that broth mixed about a half a cup of flour right into it, whisking it quickly so there wasn't any lumps and pouring that straight into the boiling stew and letting that thicken for just a few minutes. The stew is gonna have a lot of depth of flavor because we made that stock from scratch with onions and rosemary and carrots. And then to add a little bit of variety of color, I'm adding some frozen peas in here um, so that green will just pop out against all of the brown. And there you go. We've got stew and bread. Just a hearty meal. Don't you just love those smiles? My boys get so excited when they see fresh bread. <laughs> What I want you to do now is go ahead, check out the description box below. That's where I put all of my links. Let's talk down below about sourdough or whatever else you're interested in. Thanks so much for being with me today and I'll catch you next time. Love you lots.